Okay, great. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us at tonight's Board of Supervisors meeting. Before we get started, just so everyone knows, the meeting is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube. Um, and it's hybrid. Obviously, there's people joining us from home, and they can comment by using the raise hand function. Uh, and we'll keep an eye on that, right? Is that going to work tonight? Okay, great. And with that, I will now call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from August 15th, 2022. Do I have a motion? Uh, move to approve the minutes. Second. Any comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next up are the reports. First up is Chief Alexander from the police department. Where's the microphone? Uh, thank you and good evening. For the month of August 2022, the Euclid Township Police Department officers documented 995 entries in the police department call reporting system. During the reporting period, the officers issued 122 traffic citations, 38 written warnings. They investigated 29 motor vehicle crashes and they arrested 12 individuals. Officers conducted three motor carrier details at the weigh station, resulting in 1,006 commercial motor vehicles being weighed, four of which were found to be overweight. During the detail, the officers also performed 11 inspections and found numerous violations, resulting in four vehicles and one commercial motor vehicle driver being placed out of service. Sergeant McBride performed four additional commercial motor vehicle inspections during his normal work days, identifying numerous violations and placing one vehicle out of service. Uh, year to date, the officers have documented 8,180 calls in our call reporting system. They've arrested 97 individuals. They've issued 810 traffic citations, 224 warnings. They've investigated 235 crashes. And um, for the month of August, the officers did have one Narcan administration. And that's right, my, my report. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up is the treasurer. Good evening. Um, through the month of August in the general fund, we have collected just under 78% of our budgeted revenues and have spent just under 63% of our budgeted expenditures. Wow, okay, <coughs> thank you. Public works. Thank you. For the month of August, the daily average flow to the Downingtown area treatment plant was uh, 1,310,864 gallons per day. There was one new connection into the Dara system at 121 South Village Avenue and no new connections to the Eagle View wastewater treatment plant. For the month of August, the township received 1.34 inches of rain. Normal for August is about 3.9 inches. The township is or slash was still down 4.8 inches of rain. However, we have had a very active September so far. So um, expect that to increase. The department responded to 168 PA1 calls for the month of August, um, as well as wrapped up the 2022 paving projects for the year. There's still some minor repairs that need to be made as well as some crack sealing along the roadways, but we have finally started to wrap that project up. Uh, the sewer division televised 1,491 feet of sewer pipe and 199 feet of storm pipe for the month in advance of the 2022 paving project as well as repaired stormwater pipe and catch basin repairs uh, on Ravenwood at Stoughton, West Devon, Ashland, Doverport, and Spring Run. Uh, crews were out to replace a failed sea top on Chippenham Court and a failed outfall pipe on William Salisbury. Finally, the department was out to repair areas of failed asphalt on North Milford Road and Rice Boulevard, as well as performing state inspections and vehicle maintenance as required. Thank you. Fire Marshal's report. 
Uh, Mike couldn't be here tonight, but the building department in the month of August uh, issued 94 permits for construction activities. A total of 117 inspections were conducted. A total of 38 fire code inspections were conducted. 44 use and occupancy certificates were issued and the fire marshal responded to 23 incidents during working hours and investigated one open burning complaint. Thank you. Lionville Fire Company. Uh, Lionville Fire Company responded to 58 incidents during the month of August. Uh, 28 of those were in Euclid, eight in Upper Euclid, eight in West Pikeland, and 14 in other municipalities. Uh, the total year to date is 412. Thank you. Do we have someone here from the Euclid Ambulance Company to give a report? Did they send? Did they send an email report? No. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the reports? So moved. Second. Uh, any comments or questions? I have one comment. Sure. Um, I just wanted to make sure we welcomed Officer Lanchi to the Euclid Township Police Department. One more um, patrol officer sworn into duty earlier this month. So welcome, Officer Lanchi. And I also wanted to just ask um, Chief Alexander if you had any information to share about the upcoming Citizens Police Academy for this year. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so. <laughs> thank you. So the Citizen Academy uh, started last Tuesday, uh, was the introduction night. Uh, the uh, folks in the class were issued their um, ID badges and uh, shirts. We went through all the expectations for the Academy moving forward. Uh, we were uh, able to do introductions, uh, have everybody meet each other. We provided them with a store of uh, a, a station tour. And um, the second class will actually be uh, tomorrow night. And uh, much of that class will be focusing on the commercial motor vehicle uh, side of things that we do here. Uh, they'll have an opportunity to go down to the way station. Uh, one of the folks from the road department is going to bring a fully road, uh, loaded dump truck so that they can see how that truck would be weighed on the, on the scales down there and then what the process would be moving forward. So they have a big night actually tomorrow night as well. Awesome. How many do we have? How many? Uh, 16. It's a Thank very, you. very popular program. Yeah. I was excited to see we were able to hold that this year. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the board? Questions? No. Any questions or comments from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. On to the business. The first item on, wait. Do we have to add? Uh, oh. Do we have to add something? To yeah, we're gonna add something to the agenda, right? We got a last minute submission. Well, we can get, when we get to that. Okay. You yeah. can wait till you get to that. Okay. Um, okay, the first item of business is the update on the Downingtown Library. Lauren Smith is here. Hi. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Lauren Smith. I'm the director of the Downtown Library. Started in April 2020. Is that on? Yeah. I don't know if that's on. Yeah, it doesn't sound very loud. Okay. I think that's better. <laughs> Mic check. All right. So thank you for having me here this evening. My name is Lauren Smythe. As I was saying, I'm the director of the Downingtown Library, having started in late April 2022. I come to Downingtown with more than 14 years of experience in public libraries, with the majority of that experience in neighboring Montgomery County. Along with introducing myself this evening, I wanted to also share a brief update on the library. But first and foremost, I want to uh, thank all of you, the township supervisors, Euclid residents, staff, for your con continued support and generosity to the Downingtown Library. You're an important partner to the library. We want to be as strong as a partner to you as well. So please never hesitate to reach out if we can help you to better serve the residents of Euclid Township. My biggest update today is that we are just wrapping up summer, which is the busiest time for all public libraries. Um, and at Downingtown Public Library, we experienced one of the busiest summer reading programs I've seen in my career, particularly for a library of our size. More than 1,400 people signed up for the program. We had 50 teen volunteers assisting to run the program. We had about 525 people show up on our June 10th summer reading kickoff with more than 1,100 people using the library that day alone. It was very busy. <laughs> 
We are literally buzzing with activity and we're looking forward to continuing to welcome patrons back this fall as we start all of our fall programming. So please visit our website at downingtownlibrary.org to sign up for our programs for all ages from children's, teens, adults, and more. And we're working to continue to transition back to full services at pre-pandemic levels. Downingtown Library is on the cusp of tremendous growth. To work to manage this growth, one of our budget goals this year is to earmark at least an estimated $30,000 to get our staff salaries to a minimum of $12 an hour and to make other commensurate cost of living minor 2 to 3% for library staff who are already above $12 an hour. Half of our staff currently make under $12 an hour. By fairly compensating and retaining our staff, we'll be able to continue to offer high quality services while planning and meeting the continual demand for increased services. We know that Euclid residents support and use their libraries. And I know that your, uh, your residents use several libraries in the area. More than 7,728 residents have CCLS library cards. Each card usually means services for more than one person and sometimes for an entire family. In Downingtown, for the past five years, we've seen our total library cards increase 39% in the past five years to more than 9,600 cardholders as of right now. Our programming circulation numbers also continue to grow, and all of this growth is in spite of the pandemic-related closures and adjustments to services the past few years. We also provide valuable, important outreach to Downingtown School District students throughout the year, particularly during the summer, though, is when we really see kids and families. I invite you all to visit the library. You'll see the community re-engaging with the library, literacy, and shared public space, enjoying the many resources afforded them by being a member of the Chester County Library System, with everything from books to museum passes, access to technology, and educational and enrichment experiences available. For your consideration, you'll be receiving a letter in uh, within the next week to update this, it said in the coming week, but this week we'll be sending a letter from myself and from our board president, uh, Board of Trustees, Jack Hines, detailing a request for support for 2023. What we're asking our municipalities is to try to get to $3 per capita uh, on the way to the goal of $5 per capita. At this point, we know that you support other libraries as well. And what we would be asking is to just get closer to a dollar per capita. Again, we have some municipalities such as Cowntown Township that supports more than one library. So we certainly don't expect a huge increase all the way up the whole way. And we know you're supporting more than one. So um, what we would be asking most likely is to get from 52 cents per capita to at least 78 cents per capita. So we'll be detailing that in the letter that we send this week. I know that you have many budget considerations, many pulls on your demands and time, so we appreciate your consideration. I've left copies of our 2021 annual report and my business card, so if there's ever any questions or any further details I can provide, please feel free to reach out. Thank you for your time. I look forward to working with all of you to support our shared community, and if there are any questions I can answer right now, I'm happy to do that. Thank you, Mrs. Smyth. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Great. Yeah, we really appreciate the library. Thank you. For coming out tonight. Okay, next item on the agenda is a Devon Drive traffic update. So as we'll see later on in the agenda that we did receive the school district submission for their project at Downing County East High School, and we will be reviewing that. It'll be on the agenda for the October Planning Commission meeting. Um, and then another um, update I can give as far as the school zone on Devon Drive. Uh, we have instructed our township transportation engineer to start working on that project and have been in touch with PennDOT to see what we can do to coordinate with the school district and moving this forward. Okay, great. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments about the update from the board? Not for me. No. No. I, can I just add? Yeah, sure. Um, I think we had a really productive meeting with the school district earlier this month, um, actually during the first week of school, which I appreciate their ability to, to schedule us during that time. Um, but we did discuss some of the issues that had come up during the last meeting to include um, the application for a school zone to be implemented along Devon Drive, where it is currently not a school zone, um, and some of the signage requirements that would go into that um, 15 mile per hour zone during school hours. Um, 
I'm sure we'll get into it over the next couple of months with this land development um, plan submission of theirs, but there are traffic circulation changes that are going to further decrease the stacking of vehicles out onto Devon Drive. The goal is to get the buses onto the school property quicker so that they're not backing up and blocking access for the homes along Devon Drive all the way up to Whitford at 113 as well. Um, and I think, like I said, it was a very productive meeting. We had uh, school board director wisdom there with us, as well as a number of the district staff and the um, East principal and, and other facility directors. And uh, I am encouraged by everyone's understanding of the urgency of getting these applications into PennDOT. And so we'll continue to have an update moving forward, but I think we're, we're not only on the right track, we're now also moving on the track, so. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any comments or questions from the public about traffic on Devon Drive? Mr. Swimer? Yeah, just a question of the crosswalks, the raised crosswalks we pushing for pedestrian activated, it would have an impact on the cut through traffic. Is that still in the discussion? Yes. It it yes, yes, it is. Yes. Okay, and multiple ones? Uh, in other words, where the sidewalk ends? We're not, we're not taking anything off the table in our discussions okay, with right. the traffic calming on Devon Drive there. So, no, yeah. my question is, have you been looking at that specifically? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Laura was I, at the meeting. This is the same the question that I've, that I've been peppering our staff with as well. Um, my understanding is that as we were kind of waiting for this land development submission, now that it's been received, it will be sent out for review with our different engineers. We will be soliciting feedback regarding their traffic study and the flow of the volume and all that. And then, like um, Chairperson Mamie said, th there's just going to be a discussion internally about what the best option is for that where what the you know there's pros and cons on both sides but that's definitely going to be that's queued up in the conversation we were just waiting for this land development application so that we can get some input from our traffic professionals and well then, we, we got input from residents on the street in the area that's something that i've specifically asked and okay. i think you know we've had a pretty yeah. open dialogue and i've gotten yeah. to know a lot of the neighbors there and uh, i Again, speaking for myself, but I think it's totally reasonable to get input because there are some implications of putting in something like a raised crosswalk there that I would want all the parties to be mm -hmm. on board with and understand sure. what, what the decision was. Yeah. But yes, these are all things right. that that are moving on the track now. <laughs> are you talking now about that the proposal, some kind of construction thing, or is that later in the agenda? You said something about the proposal for their land uh, development submission. Yeah, that's for that. that's that's on the agenda. It's coming up. Okay. So you. you'll have an opportunity okay. to comment. Are there any other comments from the public or questions about Devon Drive traffic? Okay. Thanks for the update. Next up uh, under business is the snow bids results. Snow bid that's results. Okay. Which one? so our bid opening was Friday, and we have received no bids. Um, for snow. So we will re-advertise and this will be back in front of the board at the next meeting. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Next up, appointment of a lighting consultant. Uh, yes. So our previous lighting consultant, Stan Stuby, that has been with us for many, many years, um, officially retired. And in our search for a new lighting consultant, uh, he had recommended um, spot Stephen and McCoy, uh, specifically Seth Nace from their group. So um, we're looking to appoint him tonight uh, per his recommendation. Okay. We did meet with him and interview with him, and he seems very knowledgeable and eager to work with us. Great. Okay. Can I get a motion to appoint the lighting consultant, Seth Nace from Spot Stevens and McCoy? So moved. A second. Any comments or questions? No. No, from the public. What, what's the object, objective of the lighting consultant? Uh, they review all of our plan submissions to make sure that they comply with our lighting ordinances, basically. Make sure, like, someone doesn't put blaring lights straight into your house and stuff like that. But it, it does, I mean, today with uh, LED lighting, mm -hmm. uh, lights are very bright. 
Eagle View with 130, I guess it's the dental office that they use to light up that whole intersection. Um, I don't even know if it's lit anymore, it's just they used to drive by, maybe whatever mm. the outline now. I don't mm -hmm. know. But, um, we did you know, just we'll, update our lighting ordinance for LED lights specifically. Yeah, do you want to do you want to say anything about that, Tara? I was just going to say that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I saw a little bit online, but my concern was that wattage, which wattage and light output, mm -hmm. which don't equate. Right. So you know. They say whatever 3,000 watts or 500 watts or whatever it may be, they really have to look at the light output. Yeah, lumens or something. Well, it's lumens or it's in nits or candelas can be your square. Um, That's why we have a lighting consultant. <laughs> I know what's who's driving that person. Our ordinances, our lighting ordinances. So, can we get a copy of the ordinance to see what the Oh, yes. They're all available online. online. Yeah. Can I get your name too? Sorry. Henry Casey. Henry Casey. Okay. I live on Whitford Road. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's online. So if we have questions about that ordinance, like things just don't line up like wattage, or if there's no reference to lumens, who do we Oh, what, Tara? So me, um, our ordinance definitely addresses lumens and nits, um, specifically for different, um, either residential or commercial. Yeah, if if you if you have comments, I mean, you could submit them. I mean, it would probably be good to have them in writing at least, so that then they could be reviewed by the zoning officer and potentially the new. The new lighting consultant to see if the ordinance requires any amendment. Yeah, it just seems like you know there's there's a lot of signs out there that really don't need to be set or with that right. That's right. Why I don't know if it's a doctor's office. Why do they need the right the right or on and off? And I, you know, I don't know what people have looked at that, but light pollution. I'll take a look at yeah. the word. And reach out to Tara Giordano if you have any questions. Yep. If you look on our website and ordinances, the lighting ordinances section um, 615, but then there's a separate ordinance that we just adopted for the LEDs. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions about the lighting consultant appointment? I'll take a vote then. All in favor of appointing Seth Mace? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Lionville Hotel Associates, True Hotel, request for extension. Hi. Hi, I'm Julie Hetzel. I'm the general manager of the Hampton Inn that's right on the same plot. I'm here representing Lionville Ho Hotel Associates. And I know we originally came in 2016 to get approval to build a second hotel on the pad where hostas used to be. That, that was approved. Um, and then um, in 2019, at the end of the approval, the uh, Spring Hill Suites was approved to, to be built. So the ownership decided it wasn't the best time to have you know two hotels open in the area. It's a challenging area. So then we requested a, a an extension to 2022. Well, we all know what happened in the last couple of years. So, you know, we were happy to stay open during that time and employ all, all of our people, but it wasn't really the time to build a hotel. So we are asking that we have an extension for another 36 months until September 12th of 2025, as we've, uh, you know, since demolished the Haas's restaurant next door and turned it into a, a lovely, you know, grass park for pets and things. And then, you know, we plan on building that hotel as soon as it is feasible for the market without over hoteling uh, this, this market, which is still challenged. Yeah. Um, okay. Does the board have any questions about the true hotel extension? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do we want to offer a motion first or? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, can I get a motion then? 
Um, I would offer a motion to extend, um, to grant an extension for roughly three months to get us to our December 12th meeting. I would personally like a little bit more time to review the conditional use. Um, I'm the new kid in the class, so <laughs> I was not around when that was written, and I would just like a little bit of time to, to review that and make sure that it's, um, that I know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I think three months roughly would get us through to December 12th. Okay. Okay. So is there a second for that motion? So is, is, the motion extend. is to extend to the 12th, December 12th. December 12th, yeah. Yeah, I'll so take... we can have more time to sure decide, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, I'll second, yeah. Okay. All right, then, since the motion's now made and seconded, I will ask for comment from the board. Do, do you have, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Go All right. Uh, I would just, um, you, you indicated you don't really have a specific plan for when you're going to start, start construction. Well, um, I mean, we're hoping within these these three three years. But mm -hmm. again, you if you open a hotel before it's time, right. it drives everybody's rates down. Then your clientele changes, and the whole market's different. We you know, as good um, you know, business people, we want to take care of everybody in this market. So. You know, there's the right time to to do it, but it's still approved through Hilton. So, and they're they're behind us with the extension. Okay. Um, one other question: Just you said you're from the Ham, um, not the Hammock, sorry, the Hampton Inn. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, just out of curiosity, obviously, aside from how COVID nineteen just really yeah. devastated every mm -hmm. industry that we have, mm -hmm. um, I was curious how the hotel market is currently doing. I mean, I know I travel a lot and I'm mm -hmm. having trouble finding hotel rooms and I'm hoping that that means that we're seeing people traveling and getting back to their, you know, their lifestyles and mm -hmm. getting out a little bit. But I was just curious if you have any data or- Well, know. I have been at that hotel over 20 years as a general manager, so I've seen everything. You know, COVID was the biggest challenge I ever faced, you know, uh, but we did manage to maintain all of our people, maintained our business. And actually 2022 has been a wonderful year for us. It's on par and beating 2019. So as hotels go, I think we're performing a little stronger than some, uh, but in general, that is what the trend is. People are traveling again. And finally, I think after Labor Day, corporate is returning which is what we've really been waiting for. So I, I think it's going to be, the market's only going to go up. Great, mm -hmm. thank you. Sure. Any other questions, comments? No? no. Any questions or comments from the public? All right, then we'll go ahead and vote to approve uh, a request for an extension until the December 12th meeting, just so that we have more time to review. Sure. We weren't here either for the mm -hmm. use. No, decision. thank you so for the consideration. We just need to look at it and then sure. um, get back to you. Well, if you have any any questions, I can leave my business card. Yes, please. Okay. And that would you be great. can. And we just need to we need to take a vote in a second. I got some plans here. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. That's right. Okay. Sure, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so all in favor of granting a short extension? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Next up on the agenda, I need to put my glasses on. The Rossi Tract request for extension. Uh, yes, so as you're aware, um, a plan was submitted for Rossi for a shopping center on that site. Um, they are exploring other plan options. So they are asking for an extension until March 31st, 2023. Um, I did receive a letter from Vic Kelly from Commonwealth Engineers requesting that extension. Okay. Can I get a motion to grant an extension for the Rossi track? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? From the public, any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next up, permission to advertise stormwater ordinance update. This is just 
Uh, yes, it's a request of the county um, who's updating the Act 167, which is the stormwater management plan for the county uh, to replace the previous 2013 model um, with the new 2022 countywide ordinance. Um, we've been making some modifications uh, based on their recommendations and we are looking for permission to advertise that ordinance. Okay. For Sounds good. Month. Can I get a motion to grant permission to advertise for the stormwater ordinance? So moved. I'll second. Any comments or questions from the public? Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next up, the Downingtown East High School plan submission. Uh, yes, as has already been mentioned, I did receive the preliminary final uh, land development plan submission on Friday. Um, we plan on sending it out to all of our consultants and engineers for review uh, for discussion at the October 5th Planning Commission meeting. Did everybody get that October 5th Planning Commission? Um, also, the plan will be on our website, hopefully tomorrow. Okay, the plan will be on you. the website, hopefully tomorrow. Um, okay, can I get a motion to, oh, we don't need a motion, right? We're just saying that's submitted, that's it. Right. We don't, need we don't need a motion for this. Do we need to? Mark's sleeping over there. <laughs> well, you. I don't think you so. don't. Yeah, I mean, okay. you don't need a motion. All right, we're not going to vote on that one. Um. Does someone want to comment? Oh, sense. does anyone have any questions? Yeah, sure. Um. Does that is that I'm not clear on that. Is that going to include any kind of building, adding students to that facility? <laughs> They will not be adding students. They are putting on, I believe, like a 22,000 square foot addition um, so that they can expand their building to allow for a new curriculum program that they're trying to accomplish. Well, why would we do that? Why would we, why would we go along with that? There's not enough room up there to begin with. Well, that's, I'm, what, what do you mean there's not enough room for the students? Yeah. Not that's what I think that's the, the point. Well, right, right now we're just accepting it. Right? Yeah. But I mean, you're gonna have, there's gonna be more construction at that site. So this is just saying that they've the district has submitted a plan. Yeah. And so we are sending it out for review, and this will be for discussion at the October 5th. Yeah, Matt, Madam Chair, that's exact. I mean, the, the very reason that it's on the agenda is so you can hear that it came in mm -hmm. and keep your antennas up. It's gonna go in front of the planning commission. Yeah. It's gonna come back to the board for approval. So that's, you know, you should be ready with comments. Yeah, but, uh, again, I, I, please, I don't wanna come across the wrong way. So, no, no, but you should when review. When that school was changed from junior high school to high school, there was some pretty shifty stuff going on to make that happen. And I don't wanna see that happen again. Yeah, you, know, you should. Re that's right, okay. and you, and you should review the plans and make sure you're comfortable with them. Or make right. if you have comments, then you yeah. should raise them. Please come to the planning commission meeting, October fifth, and the plan will be available to review on our website, so you can look at it to gather your comments. You have the power to say no. We haven't reviewed the plan the yet. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> we haven't reviewed the plan yet. I, I haven't, this plan it, was literally yeah. just submitted. I haven't even seen the plan yet. No, but I'm just, is it, is it, is it something that's worth it, it, you have the power to say? No? It really, it depends on the, if it's by right, then it's difficult. If, if it's asking for things that are beyond by right, if it's asking for things that are discretionary, yeah. waivers, things like that, then maybe yes. So it's going to depend on the specifics of the request. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? about the school district submission. Okay, moving on to item number nine on the agenda, the resolution 2022-12, establishing the minimum municipal obligations for the 2023 pension plan. Great, so uh, I'll take You're gonna talk, talk about uh, it? This is a resolution that we pass pretty much every time this year mm -hmm. as required. Um, and pretty much what it does is outline the minimum municipal obligations for both our uniform and non-uniform pension programs. Um, the minimum municipal obligations for this year's police pension plan or next year's police uh, pension plan is expected to be $500,615. And for our non-uniform 
um, in 2023, it's expected to be $235,100. Um, what we're asking for is for the board to approve this resolution so that we can meet our administrative requirements. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve resolution 2022-12, establishing the minimum municipal obligation for 2023 pension plan? So moved. A second. Any comments or questions? Questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next up, number 10, resolution 2022-13, authorizing signature for the intergovernmental cooperative agreement. Did I All say right. that right? So th this is going to be a two-step oh, process. Yeah, is, right. I, I can handle this. So, so basically, there was a typo on the, on the agenda. Um, the agenda reads that it's a video sharing license agreement. Mm -hmm. um, the agreement is actually an uh, intergovernmental cooperative agreement. Um, this is something that we've been working with PennDOT on for some, well, I guess, first, what I would like to do is have the, the board vote to um, amend this on the agenda, um, instead of it reading video sharing license agreement for it to read an intergovernmental cooperation agreement. All right, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Do that, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, and I apologize for that. <laughs> Now addressing this as the cooperative agreement, inter intergovernmental cooperative agreement, um, we have been working with PennDOT as part of their US 30 advanced ITS improvements. Um, as part of that project, they have looked to install a travel time monitor on our signals at route 100 and 113. Um, we had previously entered into an agreement with them on this same topic back around July of last year. Uh, the agreement has, shifted, has been updated slightly um, for the most part, it just looks like a different template for the agreement. Um, and that will always require an update for the resolu resolution authorizing the signatory for this agreement. Um, what I'm asking the board for this evening is to consider um, this resolution authorizing myself as the signatory for this agreement so that we can get that back to PennDOT. Okay. All right, can I get a motion to approve resolution 2022-13 authorizing Mr. Greenlee for, to sign for the Intergovernmental Cooperative Agreement with PennDOT? So moved. I'll second. Any comments or questions? No. From the public, any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Should we That's, do the, uh, oh yeah, we need to, we got a last minute submission that we need to vote to add something to the agenda. Right, so I, I believe this morning we received a request for a block party on Conray's way. Um, if the board is interested in, see, in hearing that this evening, we would have a vote to add that to the agenda and then we could consider that as part of the official agenda. Okay, can I get a motion to add a block party on Conway's? Conray's. Conray's way? Right. Yep, the so moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so it's on the agenda. Now, is there anyone here from Conry's way? Okay, nobody's here. So um, I have the initial email that came in this morning. Um, they're looking for permission to hold a block party on Saturday, October 1st, from 1 to 8 p.m. on Conry's way. Um, um, they are not a through streets. They don't anticipate traffic issues. Um, they have been doing this for probably, yeah, I, I mean, anywhere between five and 10 years. I get this submission every year. Um, I don't, I did send it to Chief Alexander. I don't know if he has anything that he wants to add to that. Uh, we're familiar with it as well. We just asked that they understand that the roadway needs to be passable for emergency vehicles and Okay. And I can follow up with them tomorrow okay. since they're not here and let them know what the decision is. Okay, great. Can I get a motion to approve a block party for Conray's way on September? It's uh, October, October 1st, Saturday, October 1st. October 1st. Saturday, October 1st. One to eight. One to eight. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? No. No. I, I have one quick question. Do, do we ever get any complaints from neighboring streets or anything about I noise or anything? Okay. 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 Are there any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. 
Next up on the agenda is our ordinance hearing for single use plastic bags, uh, ordinance 2022-06, single use plastics. I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Freed. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is a uh, public hearing on an ordinance of Euclid Township, Chester County, Pennsylvania, to promote the use um, of reusable bags, prohibit the use of single-use carry-out plastic bags, polystyrene food containers, and single-use plastic straws by commercial establishments, and establishing a charge for the provision of certain types of bags at the point of sale. The purpose of the ordinance is to add a new chapter 188 designed to encourage consumers and commercial establishments to reduce the use of single use plastics and to promote and to promote substitutes for polystyrene food containers and single use plastic straws. The proposed ordinance defines the term single use carry out plastic bag, produce bag or, uh, or product bag, reusable bag, recyclable paper bag, polystyrene food container, single use plastic straw, distributor provide and commercial establishment. This new chapter restricts commercial establishments from providing single use carry out plastic bags, produce bags or product bags or reusable bags to customers, establishes a 15 uh, cent fee for recyclable paper bags that must be separately stated on a receipt and is retained uh, by the commercial establishment to be used for any purpose. The provision also allows consumers to bring uh, their own bags and allows for the sale of reusable bags. Um, I do have a number of exhibits for tonight. Um, exhibit board exhibit one is a copy of the draft ordinance. Uh, board exhibit two is the public notice that was presented to the daily local. Uh, exhibit board three is the proof of publication um, on September 1, 2022, that ran in the Daily Local. And Exhibit uh, Board 4 is the Chester County Planning Commission letter dated August 25th, 2022. Um, so with that, I will turn it back over uh, to the board, Madam Chair, and uh, for board comment as well as public comment. Okay. Is there any comment or questions? From the board about this ordinance that we discussed you know, last month. Yeah, not for me. No. Okay. I haven't already. All right, the public. Yeah, we talked about it quite a bit last month. Um, are there any comments or questions from the public? Sure. Stays with the store. It's available to the store to use however they deem appropriate. Yes, can just state yeah. your name for the Steve court report. Um, the Wawa, and they're over here with this, and the Wawa's and the and Giant and all these places. So this is, I, I don't know if you're familiar in New Jersey, this is a state law in New Jersey. So a lot of municipal uh, Giant, they have stop and shop. I actually, okay. first time I, I did it, was in New Jersey at the Stop and Shop, which is the same parent company as Giant. Um, they they actually are implementing it very well, Wawa as well. Um, do they use different kinds of materials? They do. In fact, I, I will. So I'll share my experience since, since you asked. I I my my biggest problem right now is just remembering to bring the reusable bag in. Um, once I do it, I, I got to tell you, I'm having done it in New Jersey when we were down the shore. I'm never going back. Um, it you cannot believe the amount of food you can get into a single <laughs> reusable bag. It's it's yeah, and and so in, I know in New Jersey, in New Jersey they had bags available for reusable bags available for fifty cents. I know in the all the the stores I know Wegmans, Acme, Giant, they all I think they're about ninety nine cents that they have the reusable bags, and so they're all they're available for sale. Um, and then once you buy it, you obviously, as long as you're better than me and you can actually remember to bring it in, um, then you don't have to buy it again. Yeah. 
they're they're doing it. And now again, there's certain exemptions. There's you know certain exemptions for say you know the the when you buy apples and you have those thin plastic bags, that's exempted. You're you know if you're at a hotel and you have a wet bathing suit and you need a bag to set, you're a lot that's exempted. So. I still see people. I can't see people bringing in their own bags to the wall. That's the case. Right? Yeah. Envision the change. <laughs> I mean, I think. <laughs> I mean, you just have to have an open mind, yeah, and like see see it happening because oh. it is possible. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, other so I think is it California's done it statewide as well, and I know Wegmans Narberth Narberth has had it for years and years. I know Westchester has it. I know a lot of other okay. places. I think Wegmans just announced they're going to do it in Pennsylvania anyway. The one down in Downingtown, for instance. <laughs> I would just add that I'm very encouraged by the number of businesses privately on their own that are making these decisions. I mean, you called out Wawa specifically, but yeah, even, just, even in the last year, I've noticed that they went from, you know, putting a pack of gum in a bag to you to asking if oh, you want a bag. So I, I think I think a lot of these efforts are, are spreading mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure it'll be a transition. You know, I forget my keys trying to get in the car. Um, so learning to use a bag is, is a bit yeah. of a learning curve, but I'm really encouraged by the number of businesses that we have in Euclid that have made sustainable changes, whether it's solar or offering bags or biodegradable materials, and that I see them marketing that move. So yeah. I, I think it's, it's good. Yeah. Are there any other comments from the public about <clears throat> the single use plastics ordinance? No? Okay. I would just like to point out that the county mentioned in their letter that it goes along with their efforts uh, in their latest Landscapes 3 plan that was adopted in 2018, I guess, on four, is that right? That's what it says here. So long ago, um, just for waste diversion and reduction. Um, it's definitely something countywide that they are pushing for. So. Do we make a motion now to approve? We can, right? Yeah. If we want. Motion. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, ordinance 2022 06 for single use plastics. A second. Any comments or questions? Yeah. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Mm -hmm. Hello, so less trash. Okay. We have to close the hearing. Yeah, the, we can close the record and close the hearing. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we'll read through the announcements. Um, September fourteenth, we are lucky to have a bonus yoga yoga in the park day right here at Baird Park, nine thirty a.m. Everyone's welcome. It's free. Um, so join us on Wednesday, 9 15, or September 15th, the Historical Commission has their meeting at 7.30 p.m. at the Cadwallader House. Also on September 15th, the Environmental Advisory Council has their meeting at 7 p.m. here. So everybody will have to choose which one they wanna to go to. Um, the 19th of September, the Parks and Rec Committee will meet here at 7.30 p.m. On September 21st, we have a zoning hearing board meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, to discuss 890 South York Drive, the rear yard variants. On October 5th, planning commission at 7.30 p.m. And October 10th, board of supervisors meeting at 7.30 p.m. Any, now it's time for any public questions or comments, general, not related to the agenda. This is your time to speak. Just state your name. Come on up. Yep. Sure. I'm. I have a hearing disability, so that's great for me. <laughs> uh, Michael Taylor, 462 Creekside Drive. Um, we've talked a lot about different roads in the in the uh, township recently. One road. I know it's 113. I know it's a state road. Mm -hmm. But there was yet another accident at 113 and Peck Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's been people that have been killed there. Yep. There's someone's been decapitated. They've had to land helicopters on 113. I know it's a state road. Something has to be done. 
when I heard last week, when I last month, when you wrote the letter about gun violence to the state legislature, I realized, you know, it's well within your powers to start looking into that and getting something done there because my children are becoming, my neighbors are of driving age, my, my neighbors are becoming of driving age. And if one of the, every time I see an accident there, my whole neighborhood just gets, you know, verklempt thinking it could be somebody that we know that's there. So I would just like to put that in front of the public consciousness. Okay, Thank, great. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other general comments? Yeah, Mr. Swimer. Yeah, just an update uh, on the residents that are excluded from the noise protection ordinance. Mm -hmm. Has that been corrected yet? We haven't changed the noise ordinance yet. We have had a conversation with the district. I wasn't. The, district? the school district. About, I'm assuming you're talking about the band? No. The metronome? No, I just. Please don't tag me on one issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Lot, yeah, but being excluded from noise ordinance. Well, I, can, can, I, can I comment? Yeah, sure. I, I, I don't, I listen, I'm, I'm very, I, I've been around the metronome I, I, and I understand the problems with the noise from the school. I don't think it's a fair characterization to say that you're excluded. The, the schools have, are, are noisy the, places. They're noisy places. And the, when the ordinance reads that the schools, are allowed to do certain things that other places are not allowed to do, which is essentially have some, basically it's the band, it's about the band. And um, so, you know, I, I understand, I understand what, your point and I'm very sympathetic and we were working with the district uh, regularly and emphatically that, that some of the things that's going on with the, the school that are bothering the residents around are not really acceptable, but I don't think it's fair to say that we've, excluded certain people from protections of the ordinance it's it's really i, I just don't think that's a fair way to put it but but we're allowing the school to exist in a vital way by having programs and you know what i i, I understand listen i i i'll say the the how the school got put there you know, I, I, I am understanding that there was probably something that was wrong with that process, but there's school is there now and there's nothing like that's not going to disappear. We're not going to make the school empty. I have no motive other than this is a, a in my opinion, I, maybe I'm a that's fine. You're not going to do anything. Then I guess I have to accept that. But why don't we have an ordinance that would exclude people? Let me ask you this, Mr. Swimer. Mm -hmm. You're asking about the noise ordinance because you want protection from noise. Like everybody else. Right. You have it. Right. He has it. I live right down the street from you. So you I can, you I, can it, right? I can hear the, my question to you is what bothers you, what is a nuisance to you, Mr. Swimer? Noise. They, they could any more head. specifically any type of noise? Well, or time of day? Designed for the specifics? Well, is there a time of day that you find it well, to be a nuisance? For any specifics? Yes. Okay. It's developed for certain noises made by certain people at certain times. And they're spelled out in the ordinance based on their activities and their location. And so, no, but, no, but no, you asked the question and that's the answer and you don't like it. So now you're like, ah. Eh. So that, that there are specifics in the ordinance. For instance, you're allowed to mow your grass, which is very loud in a residential area. You're allowed to, uh, but you're not allowed to construct a pipeline after seven, what is it, seven, whatever the time was, 7 p.m. a sunset. If, or, you know, uh, you're not allowed to do basically, you know, construction activities or manufacturing activities. So there's specifics in the ordinance. I know you're being dismissive, but there's the specifics in the ordinance. And what I'm saying to you is that we, we're not going to, I have no intention of changing the ordinance to restrict the schools. Okay, so there's your answer for me, at least. I, I can't speak for the other two. And anyway, I am very, listen, I am very concerned about traffic on it. We disagree with, with, with the procedure, with what you think the solution is. You want speed bumps and, and I don't, and that makes me the villain. I get that, no, I but, listen, listen, but listen, but listen, you said no. but listen, <laughs> but listen, the, what we are doing is working with the school district and, and insisting with them that they cannot be making you letting the band make loud noises at all times at night, going to practice until 10 p.m. We're, that's not acceptable. And we've told them that if 
basically, if they if it doesn't change by their own volition, then we'll have to consider other options. But if that if that solves the problem, we're not going to restrict the band from playing at three p.m. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Really okay, Mr. but then but if we restrict the band from playing after. I, I, listen, I'm not going to, I'm not defending the band. I don't know. I have any We're skin in that game. Uh, All right. It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem right to have an ordinance or a community that say, okay, well, you guys are protected. That's but you are Mr. Protected Swimer. By the ordinance. What? Mr. Uh, Salmon. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. I want to speak directly to your concern. I understand. We, well, you know, like again, again, again no, no, I understand, but I just want, there's something that came up that I did, that we did not mention that I want to tell you mm -hmm. that, that came up during our meeting with the school board, because this was an issue that we raised very strongly sitting down with them. Our okay. manager was there, Ms. Giordano was there. Mm -hmm. um, we did speak specifically to the noise that is exempt by the ordinance, which was what the band was creating. And that might not be all of your concern, but this was a specific item that we had talked about. And what we did come to during that meeting was that the band agrees to cease their noise by 7 p.m. No metronome, they will be done by 7 p.m. They have moved several times to try to find a better place where the noise is not as concussive to, you know, to everybody all the time. And what I do anticipate happening is this being an ongoing conversation because as we go back into the spring and the summer months and they get their band out summer camp you know i hear it at my house that's when they have their metronome by their own words the band is terrible in the summer and they need the metronome the most mm -hmm. they know that this is a concern they know it's something we're going to have an ongoing conversation about and it's something that i also want the residents to be aware of so that we can talk about when the noise is expected, to what extent, and how we can do our best to abate it at that time. So I, you know, I don't think we're going to have a solution that everyone, you know, it's noise, it's the band, it, we all have to figure out a way to find that sweet spot where they can do what they need, and we can also meet the needs of the residents. But it is an ongoing conversation. It's something that I think we expressed very strongly. And it's something that we will be continuing to speak with them. The only exception that they expressed to the 7 p.m. cutoff, which we specifically asked for, was I believe that there's one instance coming up before Christmas where they have the entire parade band warm up before their parade at Downingtown East. And we were told that that would be the one instance where there might be more noise than normal because they actually march around the school. Yeah. And I jokingly said, it sounds like Euclid's new Christmas parade and we should all go and watch and bring the kids. But we were very clear that the expectation was we needed to communicate about it, not just internally between the two entities, but with the residents so that accommodations can be made and the expectation for what is allowed and what we are okay with okay. is expressly everybody is aware of. And, that's true. and please... Don't misunderstand me, and I don't want to come across the wrong way. I don't, I, I, I'm being portrayed kind of the villain here. I understand that. I'm not looking for the band to be stopped. I'm not looking for that at all. We've been in this home for almost 40 years. And, and the band has been playing as a high school band for 20 of those years. We never, there wasn't one call. We let them play, it was fine. They played across the street, it was fine. Things changed. When they kept playing till 10 o'clock, and then when I asked them to, to at least stop the cowbell, the band director moved percussion closer to my home. I have it on video if you'd like to see it. At that point, I no longer was someone who's going to say, let them play, it's a high school band. So you understand, you know, some of my anger. frustration, yeah. Yeah. And then our next door neighbor who is suffering from cancer. And she went, her, her husband went out and said, please stop. And she passed away, but they wouldn't stop for her. So I have no time for them anymore. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is for me. Well, and I, like, I'm sorry. Well, I was gonna say they have moved around. I mean, they are, I do feel like they're not inching closer to your house, but I agree. The band changed 
from a marching band to a parade band a couple years ago, mm -hmm. started using the electronic met metronome right. and are practicing a lot more for their parade band things that they do. And my kid was in the band before it turned into parade band. But that was hard. What, so what? we have we have no we have no listen, if you have if if you have specific complaints about the practice of the band director with the, the students I would very much encourage you to bring it up with the school board we have yeah, yeah, yeah. we have absolutely no say on that yeah, I, I will I will say though that I mean we I I was running at the track a few a couple months ago listened to the band very late and I I also think it's unacceptable to be playing at ten o'clock. That's what I've been trying to say is that we've been trying to get them to follow without changing the ordinance, follow the follow the ordinance. 7 p.m. is the latest. Now that doesn't mean you they're fun to listen to at 5 30 p.m. either, but no, no, no. um but uh I mean there's there's there we don't want to stop the band from playing. Now like I'm not gonna sit there and I have my own thoughts about how serious bands should be for kids and how many hours someone should be out there practicing that uh, we probably are much closer in agreement than you, than you think but, but it's changed dramatically when this, <laughs> ordinance, when this ordinance was established the exception to the ordinance was established in the high school band yeah yes it's no longer a high school band now they go 12 months a year yeah 12 months a year and they practice until 9 45 sometimes that's not a high school band. But like, as Mr. Miller said, that is something that's up to the school district that we don't have any control over. How- Yeah, had an ordinance for everybody, you would. Well, no, we would no, still- we still would allow me sound up until 7 p.m., which is what we're trying to accommodate. Right. Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, so. I, I do want to clarify. I thought it was they couldn't use the metronome after 7 p.m. Is it, they're saying they're not going to practice at all after 7 p.m.? I thought it was just the metronome. It was my understanding that in these winter months, they're, I mean, they don't have lights on yeah, the field that they are practicing on. So they're, they're pretty much, I think they said even by six, they're, they're out yeah, of there. Yeah. there in snowstorms. <laughs> well, with I mean, this guy is out of control and we're suffering because of it. I don't want to listen to that stuff. You? I can bring it, I, I can record it, bring it to your house. I, I can hear it from my house. I can imagine how hard. Can you how, imagine? Yeah, I so can. Protect us. Yeah. Like that, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other general comments or questions from the public before we adjourn? No. Then can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good evening, everyone.